How's it going everybody? This is Beat the Bush. This is the FNI RSI 50 megahertz flat panel oscilloscope with two channels. Many traditional oscilloscopes have a lot of tactile knobs at the front panel. I've been using this touch screen for a while and it does take a little bit getting used to. It's incredibly low cost and very, very portable. If you're in a pinch and you don't want to carry around a really giant honking oscilloscope, this might be the way to go. For the low cost hobbyist stuff, I would say this is more on the premium side being 50 megahertz. If you're just starting out, you're wondering what speed oscilloscope should you get? If you're working with audio frequencies, well, that's 20 kilohertz or less. But if you're working on microcontrollers, you generally want to look at the crystal that's on the board. Is it 12 megahertz, 50 megahertz, or even 100 megahertz? You want to buy the scope that is at least as fast as the clock rate on that CPU. The reason being those CPUs can toggle their output pin as fast as those clock rates. So in order to see at that speed, you need a bandwidth that's at least as much as the clock rate. For most household things and hobbyist stuff, 50 megahertz is plenty. Let me go back and box this and show you all the features. These are the specs if you're interested. The instruction manual. Towards the top, there are the two channel inputs and one function generator output. On the right side, there are four ports for the digital multimeter. And on the left side, there's an on off button, USB charge button, and the reset. On the bottom, there are two rubber feet. QC card. The scope probes. Both of these scope probes are 6100 series, which are 100 megahertz. The multimeter leads, they are particularly sharp and gold plated. And you have two more cables, USB-C and the function generator connector with two alligator clips. This port is rather unique, so I'm gonna connect it. Connect one of the scope probes. Push the on off button, just hold for one second and it'll turn on. 2C53P, there's a kickstand on the back so you can just rest it and it'll face towards you. Press the menu button and we can switch between oscilloscope, signal source, settings or multimeter. Let's go to oscilloscope first. The screen is slightly reflective so we can point it down and we can see better. I've connected the signal source to scope probe number one. It comes with the plastic colored rings. These are pretty standard. Put that there for matching. To turn on the signal source, we click this little icon over here. It's a sync waveform right now. Turn off channel two for now for clarity. Most of the time you can just click this auto setting and we can see something much clearer. Change the trigger point with this yellow arrow over here. Drag the vertical position of the signal with that triangle here. Zoom in by tapping on the right side of the screen and not on the waveform. Zoom out on the left side. So now we can see the whole sync signal. We can see multiple ones of them and we can drag it left and right as well. And if we click channel one, change the vertical to let's say, zoom in a little bit, half a volt per division. You want it to match what it says on your probe. We can change the AC coupling, 20 megahertz bandwidth on in case we get any kind of spurious signal that's over 20 megahertz. And it's a little bit more zoomed in vertically. So we want to sort of center the whole thing so we can see everything. It's triggering on the right edge. So let's say we want to trigger on the falling edge. We click that trigger button and then we go falling edge now right there. And now that's triggering right at the falling edge right there. Let's go back to rising edge. And as the waveform goes up, it triggered right here where that green arrow is. There's a function icon here. We can save this image, we can also measure it, V peak to peak, and then we go back out. It shows V peak to peak of 2.7 volts. Now let's say we want to change the waveform to something else. There's a huge selection of signal source that we can generate. Sine wave, square wave, sawtooth wave, half wave, full wave, step wave, reverse step wave, direct current, index up, index decrease, multi-audio. Let's do multi-audio of one megahertz, three volt peak to peak, 50% duty cycle. And then we go back to the oscilloscope. This is multi-audio. So let's change the signal source to sine waves you can generate up to 10 megahertz and all the other waves you can generate up to five megahertz. Back to menu and check out our sine wave. The trigger is not correct, so we gotta Pull it down a little bit and then we can zoom in. Let's measure the frequency. Each division is 20 nanoseconds and we have five of them before one cycle. So that's 100 nanoseconds, that's 10 megahertz. But the frequency reading here is jumping around a bit. It might need more cycles in order to be more accurate. Come out and 
get like 20 cycles in there. Now it's reading 7.4 megahertz. Not quite as accurate as I would like it to be. And let's just generate a one megahertz now. And because we changed to one megahertz, we got to zoom out some more. It's a lot more accurate for one megahertz, it seems. Much more correct for lower frequencies. When you measure things, there's a whole bunch of different things that you can select all on and all off. Now we have all the parameters down here. One period should be 100 nanoseconds. So it's a little inaccurate for high frequencies. Amplitude is indeed around three volts. V peak to peak is 3.21. Let's see what's under the settings. You can select English, brightness, sound. The theme can be yellow or blue. Start up on boot. You can select one of the functions to always start. Let's pick oscilloscope. Auto shutdown off. We can do 15 minutes just to save battery power. USB sharing on or off. Let's look at about. Factory reset. The settings are actually pretty simple. Let's go in multimeter now and let me connect the probes. Usually multimeter has four ports. You use two of them to measure voltage. You can measure resistance, diode voltage drop, the capacitance, or even temperature, although it does not include a temperature probe with this scope. When you want to go measure small currents, you can use milliamp or the 10 amp port. Most of the time, I don't want to use sharp ones just in case I accidentally poke myself, but I do like sharp ones if I'm working on very small electronics like surface mount stuff. Here we have the digital multimeter interface. If we short this out, it measures the resistance at 0.3 ohms and beeps. It's like an auto sensing thing. So we can also measure voltages too. 14.652, pretty recent fluke here. We can compare it to 14.62. So pretty accurate. We'll lower the current down to nothing. Change it to the 10 amp port. Change to the current measuring function, amps. Now we have 0.2 amps. It can go all the way up to 10 amps. The most my power supply can do is three amps. It even has a little graph down here to show you a time plot of the current. So I can lower it back down now. We can try other functions such as the continuity tester. We have to click outside of here before it activates. Remember, we got to change this back to the voltage port. Let's go to volt. And if you accidentally try to measure a battery like this because it's on voltage mode, it actually will blow up the fuse in here because you're meant to use the voltage port. And I noticed that there's nothing warning you that you have disconnected wrong. I've done this before. It's easy to forget that you've connected this to here. Just be sure you gotta switch the ports here. So now we can measure the continuity. If there's continuity, it will switch to 0001, but it doesn't actually beep like traditional meters. If we put a diode in between, we see that the diode drop is 0.592 volts. Let's try something else, the ohm reading. Click out of the screen. We can measure the resistance of the probes themselves just by connecting them together. And we see it's very low resistance at 0.19 ohms. Here's an 11 ohm resistor and we're measuring 11.21 ohms. Although the update rate is two per second, I do appreciate how it can measure down to like one hundredth of an ohm. Let's switch again to capacitance. This is a 10 microfarad capacitor and it measures 10.79 milliamp. We slowly ramp it up. Whoop. We don't want to go too high in milliamp. I have this on for quite a while. I can feel the front is slightly warm to around 106 degrees Fahrenheit. The screen is on, a bunch of electronics is in there. So it does get a little bit warm when you're using this. Four thousand milliamp hour battery. Four thousand milliamp hour. The fuses are right here. Looks like they're soldered down. So if you want to replace these, you're gonna have to get a compatible tiny fuse and solder in place. Looks like the entire voltmeter section is over here. The scope and function generator is towards the bottom. The charge controller for the lithium ion battery is likely over here because the USB port is here as well. Remove these screws here. The whole DMM module is right here connects by a few wires to the main board. All the sensitive electronics contained within this metal cage. You have a high density ribbon cable that goes towards the front touchscreen. I'm gonna guess this is the touchscreen controller. Usually they like to put it on the ribbon cable for what you pay for. There's a lot stuffed into this whole thing. In terms of accuracy, it's fairly good compared to more professional oscilloscopes. The way you read the accuracy is 
plus or minus half a percent of whatever you're reading plus three of the least significant digits. So let's say the DC voltage is 100. 100 would show 100.00. The true voltage can be anywhere between 100.5 to 99.5. Then you have to plus three of the least significant digits, which is 0.03. The true voltage would be 100.53 or 99.47. Notice it also shows temperature over here, but the temperature probe is not included. The surface of this thing is actually glass, so it's not gonna scratch as easily as plastic ones. It's also an IPS screen, so the brightness won't dim too much as you change angles in front. This allows for more clarity if you're looking at it from the side like that, and you can still read it clearly. The Scopes USB-C port is a two amp port. It's using about 0.4 amps to charge it. The product saves bitmap images. So if you go to Funcation and if you say image, this is one of the images that we just saved. We can click on it and it shows a sync wave that we saved from before. The USB port appears as a mass storage device and these images will just appear as bitmaps. If you go to Function and Calculation, you can add two signals, subtract two, multiply, divide. FFT, which is the most interesting, negative one, negative two, absolute value of one or absolute value of two. So let's go with FFT for now. We have a sine wave that's 10 megahertz and we can see the peak right here. Let's change it to the sync wave. Not much you can do about which frequencies you can see on this FFT. If we do a one megahertz square wave, we can see the components. Usually FFTs and scopes is not the best. It's not like a spectrum analyzer, but it gives you rudimentary information. And if you're in a pinch, it may just work. If you guys are interested in this oscilloscope, being 50 hertz and two channels, it's a pretty good deal. Check out my affiliate link down in the video description below. Thanks for watching this video. Until next time.